Right, I'm on less familiar ground here. So what I'm holding is the Jabalani, I think that's how it's pronounced, I hope that's how it's pronounced, official match ball for the World Cup, which has caused very many people and very many players a great, great deal of pain. So I feel a bit of a fraud talking about football because I was the um, stereotypical nerd at school, interested in music, interested in computer games, interested in computer programming. It's a new type of football ball, football, that was introduced for, for the World Cup. In fact, a number of different clubs have been using it. For example, the German, the German Bundesliga. But um, it's the official ball of the, of, of the World Cup. And the problem is very many players are having great difficulty in controlling it. In fact, some of them um, have said that it behaves as if the supernatural is controlling it. They can't, they really can't handle it. In simple terms, a ball going through the air, you can imagine it as a ball, of have got Zealand, sorry. In, in simple terms, a ball going through the air, you can imagine it as a ball with the air flowing smoothly around it. But that's really too simple because it, the reality of the situation is that the ball causes drag as it passes through the air. And so what you see is you see the air spread out and instead of going smoothly around, it goes straight on and then you get turbulence behind the ball and that's, that's drag. What we're going to have to do to try and dig out and understand just why it's so difficult to control is get into what turns out to be the really, really difficult um, area of fluid mechanics, hydrodynamics and how that relates to, to objects moving it. <laughs> moving in a fluid. The turbulence is behind the ball in its past, why is it still affecting the ball? Ah, well because of conservation of momentum. So what drag there is on the ball, the energy for that and the momentum for that have to have come out of the ball. Okay, so um, it's basically Newton's laws of physics that slow the ball down as it's passing through the air. The interesting thing about this, when you first look at it, it's not like a traditional football. It doesn't have the 20 hexagons, the 12 pentagons, which is the, the standard Buckminster ball, which has been used for quite some time. It's, it's got a much more a sort of smoother appearance, much more moulded, I guess, than the standard ball. And also, it has these rims and these ridges all over it. We've got a, an object. Luckily, in this case, it's quite, it's quite spherical. And it's moving through a fluid. Now, generally, we think of fluids as being liquids, but the air is actually a fluid. And what forces are in this, on this ball? Well, obviously, there's the force downwards due to gravity. But there's also, it's moving through air. If air wasn't there, if we didn't have air resistance, this would just go through. If we didn't have any friction at all on the ball, it would just continue for infinity. But in, obviously, we have air, and that acts, that puts a drag force on the ball. What's, what's, what we're seeing in this World Cup, we're seeing two things in this World Cup, I think, primarily, apart from swerve, which we're not seeing in this World Cup. Um, we're seeing the ball going too far, and I think you can attribute that to two things. Firstly, this ball um, has been designed to have less drag, so the players aren't used to that, and it's catching them by surprise. The ball is travelling through the air, it's going a lot further, and that's, especially with England, you're seeing them overhitting the ball a lot. The key thing is just how the ball moves through the air, and importantly, how the air moves past the ball. So we've got two different regimes, really, one of which is called laminar flow. And laminar flow is where you get nice, smooth streamlines going across the ball. The ball goes through, through the air, and... What, what you end up with a very, very smooth passage of the ball. But in fact, for balls moving at any sort of velocity comparable to that you um, have in, in a game of football, soccer, of that persuasion, then it's in fact what you get is turbulent flow. The other thing you're seeing is that this ball is bouncy. And we've just had a kick around and it's like a power ball. It's unbelievable. You touch it and it just goes springing off. And the reason for that is because it's got a high coefficient of restitution, right? Which essentially means it's just a very elastic ball. If you like, you can take a ball, you can drop it, and the height that it bounces back to, the ratio of the height that you drop it and the height that it bounces back to is its coefficient of restitution. This ball bounces back about 70% of the way. The important thing is that as, you're, as the, the, the ball moves through the air and it's in this turbulent flow regime, you get little eddies of, of, and vortices of, of air. And what they do is that they change the, the pressure around the ball. And there's something called Bernoulli's law, important, very important law, which basically relates pressure and, and speed. So the higher the speed, the lower the pressure. And so if you, if you have this ball moving through the air, you're getting these, these eddies, uh, these vortices set up, you're changing the velocity, but you're also changing the pressure. And those things are coupled together. And so what you can do, if you, if you change that turbulent flow, you play with that turbulent flow, then what you can do is you can adjust the pressure 
on different, on different sides of the ball. If you put spin on the ball, you can also adjust that pressure difference. And that is how you control the ball. That's how you move it, make it move different um, uh, directions. Footballers aren't traditionally the smartest people in the world. Are you saying they understand laminar and turbulent flow? It's remarkable how they, they, I am sure that they don't. Well, I'm sure that some of them might understand, but I'm sure that the majority probably don't understand laminar and turbulent flow. Pretty certain I don't understand laminar and turbulent flow. But it's remar what is remarkable is that, that simply by practice and through training, footballers have sort of embedded all this physics knowledge by intuition and can bend the ball as, as almost at will, the best can. So this new ball, the difficulty is because it's been changed and because it's been made more aerodynamic, and in fact it has been made more aerodynamic, and in fact Loughborough University, which like Nottingham is in the East Midlands, spent a lot of time and effort, I think six years, really working on, on, on this ball. But the difficulty is, of course, is that the players then have to take have to somehow take account of this without knowing all the detailed physics, of course, in terms of how this thing flies. And so that's that's you have to unlearn basically your control of the ball and 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 relearn a completely different way of, of controlling it. Moreover, the working um, they're, they're playing in a, a very different um, environment in terms of atmospheric pressure and that will also affect how, how the ball plays, how it will affect how, how the, the, you have this crossover between turbulent and laminar flow, it will affect how the ball spins, all of which depend on just how, it's a simple, it seems simple but it's very important, it's very very tricky to analyse, just how the, the, the air flows across the ball. It's these effects, it's the lack of drag, it's the bounciness of the ball, and to a certain extent, but really not very much, it's the altitude that they're playing at on occasion, because obviously at higher altitude, the air's thinner, the ball drags less. Okay, so this is a, a really simple, I thought it was a really neat demo that I saw on the, saw on the internet, um, and therefore I've nicked it, I've stolen it. Um, so what we have here, is we're just going to show an effect called the Magnus effect, which shows how simply by putting spin on a ball, you can control how it actually moves through through the end. Again, what it's what well, I'm not going to go into the details exactly of how this works, but the important thing is that by controlling the velocity, the speed of air at different positions of the ball, then you control the pressure, and by controlling the pressure, then you can get it to go up and go down and do very many different things. What you want to really look out for is that as I as I pull this and let release it, you should see the um, the ball move up in the air to get some lift upwards due to the fact that it's spinning. So let's try it. Yeah, that didn't work too bad. That was really cool. So what was happening? What I did there was just by um, wrapping the elastic band around it and then releasing. What you do is you put spin on that. And so this is travelling through the air, but there's also a, a layer of air which is basically coupled to the um, to the cups. And so as that's moving around. We've got the air coming, it's going against air here. So on one side, what you have is that this couple layer is moving with the airflow, and sorry, with the airflow, and on the other side it's moving against the airflow. And what that does is that creates a pressure difference. And so what you can do from that pressure difference, you create a greater pressure here than here, you lift it up. 